Spring is always an exciting time for me. Everywhere there's something happening and you don't need to go far to witness some amazing wildlife. My garden's a real refuge for me and recently it's become my wildlife world. I mean, it's certainly not the biggest garden by any means, but that doesn't mean it isn't home to a whole host of fascinating creatures. And there's lots to see if you know where to look. Ah, oh, now here's an insect I was hoping I'd find, a lovely ginger furry insect. And you can see it may look like a bee, but it's actually a fly. This is a dark bordered bee fly. They are masquerading marvels, but the giveaway is that they only have one pair of functional wings. Now, just like bees, they drink nectar and they're important pollinators for some of our early blossoms, including fruit trees. Fabulous creatures, but there's a dark side to the bee fly. Bee flies are parasites. They lay their eggs near the burrows of solitary bees. The female hovers over a patch of bare ground, then dives down to collect soil in a small abdominal chamber. She coats her eggs in this soil, making them the perfect weight to be accurately flung towards the nest. And every now and again, it'll give a little downward jerk with its abdomen, and it's flicking out an egg. We can't see it because they're very small eggs. Hopefully, those eggs are going to end up near the burrow of a solitary bee. When the eggs land, a maggot will hatch out, a tiny little maggot. It will crawl down into the bee's hole and it will eat the bee larvae by sucking its juices. <laughs> With that lovely image, let's keep searching. Right under our noses is a real gem, one of Britain's tiniest ladybirds, and I'm very pleased to have it at the top of my garden. Just pop it into this tube. All I can see in this tube is uh, a tiny little dot moving very, very quickly along the surface of the glass. There are uh, nearly 50 species of ladybird in the British Isles, and we're most familiar with the two-spot ladybird and the seven-spot ladybird. The horseshoe ladybird has a lovely little pale head and the most obvious feature is a little golden horseshoe across the wing cases. The horseshoe ladybird may be small, but it's actually a voracious predator. One little tip if you're looking for horseshoe ladybirds is make sure the food plant for the white flies in your garden and white fly are very common on plants like cabbages, they're on honeysuckle sometimes, on tomatoes if you grow them out of doors, but also on this greater celandine plant. And you never know, you might see this beautiful little ladybird for yourself, but I do warn you, it's very, very small indeed. Good luck. In my garden, one of the most exciting creatures that I always look forward to seeing every year is the hairy-footed or feather-footed flower bee. In fact, there's this one just flown past me. These are lovely little bees, and they're the earliest solitary bee to emerge in spring. They come out at the end of February or early March, and they love feeding on pulmonaria, lungwort flowers. Now, when the male bees emerge, they're a lovely golden, uh, foxy color almost and they have fringes of long hairs along the forelegs, hence their name hairy-footed or feather-footed bee. Now, the female, she looks completely different. She's black and she has a golden pollen basket. And for a long time, I just thought I was looking at little tiny bumblebees. Sometimes on a spring day, the whole garden can seem alive with these bees because the males fight each other for possession of the female. It's a very, very important prize. What was a mystery for me was finding out where these bees nested. And in fact, I found them investigating my chimney stack and they're nesting in crevices between the brickwork. And there they lay their eggs on the supplies of pollen and then die. The female flower bee never sees her off. Spring. So by the end of May, there are no flower bees left. This is really a bee of the springtime. 
Now, I'm lucky enough to have my own garden, but of course, if you want to venture out on an insect safari, you can discover some strange and fascinating creatures wherever you live.